want my mommy. I don't, I don't even, I don't even understand. Wait, 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 let me shut up, hold on. What is that? How they do that? Who? Who? Mommy, I'm scared. Oh, my mom. I'm not even playing right now. I'm being so for real. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Heart, it's the heart hearting. It's the heart hearting. Okay, today we'll be watching scary TikToks that I found at like three o'clock in the morning. Do not ask me why I'm up, why are you awake? Don't worry about my business. Where about you? What about you and them kids and what y'all gonna eat tonight? Don't worry about me. Thank you, thank you. And if you don't have kids, then shut up or don't talk to me. But yeah, so let's get into it. I found a compilation of scary TikToks and we're just going to delve right in. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fucking moments caught at Target stores, part one. In this video, a woman films herself talking to a man in a Target store. It's unclear what they are talking about, but then the woman points the camera at him and asks if he remembers talking to her before. The man instantly starts running out of the Target. Stop that guy! Call the cops! Call the cops on him! Call the cops! The woman chases him out yelling for people to stop him and call the police. She chases him all the way out to the parking lot, and he gets in his car and leaves. The woman said that she had seen the man in the Target before, and he had asked her super inappropriate questions that made her feel very uncomfortable. That was what was going through my head, was just, I had to get his face, I had to get something on him to put put him out there and catch this guy. Why? Why did you chase him into the parking lot? I mean, when you was filming him, you got his face when you was talking to him in the store. Did you really need to chase this man? What if you chase him to his car and he had something in his car and he just turned around, bow, bow, and, you was, and it was over? You do not need to chase him outside. However, why are you, but then on the flip side, why are you in Target asking me weird questions? This is Target. I'm just trying to get my groceries and leave, sir. I hate when, ugh. and it's just like, ugh. It will be so weird. Like, I'm just in the, I'm just trying to get my eggs. Like, why are you, why, why are you following me? Why are you talking to me in the deli aisle? I don't want to be friends. I want to go home. Why would y'all remember that show? Um, what was it a thousand ways to die or dumbest ways to die or one of them show? I think it was like a thousand ways to die. Why would you go on the why would you do that? Why would you what sense does that make? Oh my god, let me go into the train tunnel and then get surprised when a train is there. Bay, the train tracks ain't there for design, like it's not there for decoration or accessory. Why would you do that, friend? You better thank Jesus that, uh, that you made it through because that was stupid. Stop it! Moments caught on camera PT.11.
Um, obviously, that woman was off of a Perk 30 or bath salt. So rather than recording her this entire time, call the police. And if you call the police, close the blinds. I feel like you make it worse when you make eye contact with them. Because now it's like, oh, now I know that you see me. So now it's finna, now I'm finna crank it up like 10 notches. Don't make eye contact. Don't, don't make eye contact. You know what? It probably was possession of like meth. So really, you know how they say don't feed the stray cats because they just won't go away? Um, don't give crackheads eye contact? Is that, is that the lesson that, yeah. Things found deep in the woods. This footage shows two dirt bike riders riding on a remote path in the woods on the 15th of September 2017. As they ride their dirt bikes further through the woods, they then come across every dirt bike rider's worst nightmare. Tied up to trees, there was a deadly steel cable trap which they almost ran into at full speed. A steel cable trap is an extremely dangerous trap where someone ties a sharp wire around two trees that blocks the path of mountain bikers and dirt bikers. These traps could easily be fatal and seriously injure people, but thankfully they stopped just in time. Who is setting traps in the woods? This is not Scooby-Doo, stop that. So why, why would you do that? What, what do you get from that? I'm, I'm going to tie this here and hopefully someone trips on it and fall. Or is that like a trap to kidnap somebody? Whoa, whoa, somebody signed me up for criminal minds. I just, I just cracked the code. They're doing it so they can kidnap them and harvest their organs. See, I'm telling you, I just cracked the case. Somebody call the FBI and hire me right now. This man claims his psychiatrist controlled and took over his life for 30 years. This is the Shrink Next Door case. In 1981 in New York, Marty Markowitz was having a hard time. He was grieving the loss of his parents and having problems with his family business. Marty was a millionaire and financially well off, but was just really lost. He heard about a psychiatrist named Dr. Isaac Ike Hirschkopf, who was rumored to have a direct and unconventional approach with his clients. He was well known as a celebrity doctor and would flaunt his relationships with well-known people like Gwyneth Paltrow and him. Yuck. Marty began seeing the doctor- I'm sorry, you lost me at OJ. Really? You went to OJ's therapist? Really? OJ? And you was like, this is it, he gonna help me? OJ? I don't know too much about Gwyneth besides like the almond thing, but like, OJ? And he really helped him at first, but then things took a strange turn. The doctor began inserting himself into Marty's life. He convinced Marty to give him control over his finances. Marty would run errands for him. The doctor alienated him from his sister, pictured here by telling him that he couldn't trust her. It even got to the point where the doctor moved into Marty's Hamptons home and pretended it was his own. The doctor would host parties there and then force Marty to serve the guests as part of the catering staff. He essentially became the doctor's handyman and assistant while paying him. A neighbor of the Hamptons home, journalist Joe Nocera, assumed that Dr. Ike owned the home and Marty was just a groundskeeper. Joe began investigating and realized that this was one twisted ordeal. Marty said, quote, he didn't let me have a girlfriend. I would go on a date and he'd call her a gold digger. He would say, everyone is out to get you. I'm going to protect you. And I was stupid enough to buy it. The doctor persuaded Marty to rewrite his will and leave his entire estate to him and installed himself as the president of Markowitz's company. And this continued on for 30 years. It wasn't until 2010 when Marty went in for a medical procedure. Afterwards, he noticed that Dr. Ike didn't check on him or visit. And he finally began questioning the relationship. The doctor knew Marty truly didn't have anyone else in his life and Marty realized that this entire relationship was a fraud. After realizing he was quote, living a lie, Marty cut off ties with the doctor and later found out that Dr. Ike had done this to multiple other patients over the years. He was ultimately ordered to surrender his license. Marty's story became the center of podcasts and eventually was adapted into the Apple TV drama, The Shrink Next Door with Will Ferrell and Paul Rudd. For a doctor to take advantage of someone that's coming to them for help is really disgusting. But Marty is now free of the doctor and is enjoying time with a new girlfriend. What are your thoughts on this case? It's crazy how, and it's crazy because I've heard like more stories about, it's crazy how people, how deeply people can manipulate and brainwash people. Like it's crazy. People, someone could convince you right now that your draws would eat you alive. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to take your draws off and be like, well, they really just manipulated you out your draws. That's how deep the stuff be going. Like that's how, and to be honest, if I had the manipulation powers, I would do it to get like free groceries for real. Like I would just like 
convince like the cashier at like Walmart to be like, I'll be like, girl, just give me this milk for free. You know what I'm saying? If if you give me the milk for free, it'll like end global warming. And she'll believe me because I got the manipulation skills down. I might be onto something. I might be on to something. I'll be like, oh, give me the milk because it's free grocery day. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. No one, no one steal my idea. No one steal my idea. I sure found a sea monster in Antarctica. In 1974, Russian scientists at the Vostok Research Output Station discovered that there was actually a subglacial lake two miles beneath them, but it wasn't until 30 years later when they finally breached the ice. The first team of divers that explored the lake encountered a 33 foot long, 14 tentacle squid that released a toxin into the water to immobilize three members of the expedition team, eventually killing them. They then came back with backup and the scientists were able to then cage the creature. But when they returned to the surface, the creature whose name is now Organism 46B was actually seized by the Russian officials and the team was told to keep this quiet. To this day, nobody has any idea where Organism 46B is, but rumor has it the creature is being experimented on to become a weapon for the Russian military. Y'all need to leave the ocean alone. Um, leave the ocean alone. I'm telling you right now, there are certain things in life we need to leave alone. The ocean is one of them. You you don't know what's down there, what it can do. And personally me, I like land. I'm so cool with the land. I'm so, y'all need to leave the ocean alone. We don't need to conquer everything. Land is cool. Let the animals, let the fish and stuff have the water. Let them have that. Let them do what they got to deal with. Me personally, I'm saying, I'm saying, what did TLC say? Stick to the rivers and lakes. Scratch that. I'm sticking to the bricks in the streets. I do mean the streets, but that's neither here nor there. I'm going to be talking about the chilling disappearance of Evelyn Hartley. On October 23rd, 1953, Evelyn went to babysit the 20-month-old Avigo Rasmussen. Now, every time Evelyn had a babysitting job, her dad would have her call and check in. This particular night, her dad wanted her to call at 8.30 exactly. And when she didn't call, he got concerned. So he tried calling the house and there was no response. So he waited a little bit longer and when he still hadn't heard from her, he decided that he was gonna go to the house. Now when he arrived and knocked on the door, there was no answer despite lights being on and he could hear the radio. So he tried again, this time knocking more furiously, hoping that somebody would answer the door, but still no answer. Concerned why his daughter would not be answering the door, he decided to try and find another way in. He checked all doors leading inside and everything was locked. How can you not get into your own house? Just, just questions. That, just questions. Or maybe I missed something, but like, what? We all know I don't pay attention to anything. Obviously, she's babysitting at another little girl's house. It's not her house. I'm thinking she's the one who's getting babysit. She was the one babysitting, so it wasn't his house. Obviously, editing Anya knows that and filming Anya is stupid per usual. When he came across the basement window, which the screen was off and it was sitting open. So he climbed in through that way, only to notice that there had been a ladder set up against the window on the inside so somebody could get in and out. Once inside the house, he decided to investigate. In the living room, furniture was moved around, Evelyn's books were all over the place, but still nobody was there. While investigating, he realized that every single door inside the house was locked. And thankfully, he came across the 20-month-old safely sleeping in her crib. Extremely concerned on his daughter's whereabouts, he immediately called the police. Once they arrived, they located her shoes in two different rooms, her broken glasses, as well as blood. Absolutely no possessions were missing. The only thing missing was Evelyn. When they did a perimeter search, they found more blood outside, as well as a bloody handprint on a nearby garage. So they brought in some bloodhounds, which traced the blood a couple blocks away. And they theorized that she had been placed into a car and driven away wherever they were taking her. A couple days later, a resident called the police and told them that they had seen a car speeding away from that area. He had seen one man in the front seat, a man in the back seat, and a girl in the back seat leaning against the window. This led to a massive search of everybody looking for Evelyn. Police started checking cars in the town. They printed out 40,000 My Car Is Okay stickers. So once they checked somebody's back seat and trunk, they would put a sticker on their car. Several days later, various clothing items were found around the town, and some of them were covered in blood. One of the jackets that had been found, unfortunately, had Evelyn's blood type on it. In May of 1954, the police decided to do a mass lie detector test of high school boys to see if they could find more information on Evelyn. They planned on doing 1,750 tests, but they stopped at 300 and still had no more information on Evelyn than they did before. 
After his arrest, it was suspected that maybe Ed Gein had something to do with her disappearance, but he absolutely denied any involvement in it. He passed lie detector tests, and after a search of his property, he was cleared. Despite this, some people still consider him a suspect. Throughout the years, multiple people tried coming forth about her disappearance, but were all eventually cleared. After about 25 years, her parents had completely given up hope of ever finding her again. To this day, Evelyn's case still remains unsolved. This is why I can't have kids, because I don't, tr I wouldn't trust nobody with my kid. I don't trust nobody with my kid but me. <laughs> nobody. See, this is why I can't have kids, because I would lose my mind. Literally, I would literally lose my coconuts. Like, it would be up and stuck, because let my kid go missing. I'm beating up everybody in my past. I swear to God, don't even look at me. Don't even look in my direction, because I have to duke you up. Just off the fact that you might have my baby. Like, it's straight like that. Now we have to fight. See, not to beat you up, because you might have my kid. And then you're like, man, I don't even know you for real, and I don't know your kid. But I'm like, but I feel like you might. And just because you was walking past me, I have to beat you up, just in case you might have my kid. Or you might know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody and tell somebody that know my kid. Lord, don't make me nobody mama, because it's about to be up and stuck with everybody on the block. Hey, look, a pizza. You gotta let him into your house now. That's the kind of stuff that gets you beat up and tased. Please, stop. Don't mess with Door. That's how you get beat up, tased, shot, etc, etc, etc. That's how people stick the hounds on you. Stop playing ding dong ditch on people's doors. You don't know what they got behind that door. Leave people alone. Humans were never meant to see, part one. The video that I'm about to show you shows what happens to being exposed to radiation for too long which would then leave behind your shadow. But that's not the scary part about the video. The man who was doing the experiment in this video died three days after, but the scientist said it had nothing to do with the experiment, but it actually did and he got radiation poisoning. I want my mommy. I don't, I don't even, I don't even understand. Wait, 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 let me shut up, hold on. What is that? How they do that? Who? Who? Mommy, I'm scared. Oh, my mom. I'm not even playing right now. I'm being so for real. I'm being so for real. Um, that's just about, <clears throat> I don't know why that scared me. I don't even, I don't get it. What did, what did they do? I don't like stuff that's in black and white. I don't like that. It scared me. Like something about it just get creepy down to my esophagus. So I need a deep breath. And maybe like a Xanax or something. Maybe like some Lexapro. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's my Ross today's video. Um, don't forget to create your own happiness. I think I'm gonna like read the Bible and go to sleep. Um, heavy on read the Bible and then call the police and, and go to sleep. All right. Bye. I love you. Mm.